You're watching KTVE 10 News Today in HD. Welcome back, everybody. Joining me now is Senator David Vitter. Thank you so much for waking up Thank early. Thank you, David. Good to be with you. Sorry about my voice. I lost most of it yesterday. Oh, well, I, I think you're going to get a lot more uh, yeah. workout with your voice coming yeah. up. You've got a busy schedule coming up. I do. A lot of town halls. I do those in every parish of the state, every Congress. So this morning, I'm going to be in Farmerville at 930. This afternoon, I'm going to be in Homer at 430 p.m. And then in between, I'm going to visit with the Monroe Rotary Club. So I'd love for folks to come out and have patience with my voice, but bring your passions and your ideas and your questions and concerns. What, what, in the past, what type of response have you gotten from these town halls? Oh, these have been great. These are an essential part of my doing my job right. Uh, great ideas, great input. Lately, a lot of concern about illegal immigration, which I think has grown, grown from a serious problem to a real crisis. Related to that, uh, the terrorist threat, ISIS, and also public health threats like Ebola. So a lot of good discussion about all those important issues. Yeah, and I want to dive into that right now. You know, the Ebola epidemic, crisis, whatever you want to call it. You know, some folks are saying we're not doing enough. Others saying the reaction is a little overboard. What, what What's your opinion on this whole thing? Well, I don't think there's been strong enough leadership at the federal level from the president and his appointees. In particular, I think we need to focus and impose travel restrictions. In the 1970s, there was an Ebola outbreak in Africa. It was controlled. It was eventually eradicated because of quarantine action and travel restrictions. And we need to do that. Yes, we need to attack the issue there at its source and attack it there. But what goes hand in hand with that is keeping it there and travel restrictions. What was your opinion about the president <coughs> appointing uh, an Ebola czar with this whole thing? Well, um, you know, first of all, I think we have too many czars. Secondly, he has no medical or related background, so I was disappointed about that. Uh, that wouldn't matter so much if he was leading, if we had the right strong policies. Uh, we don't. We haven't gotten that from the CDC or others in the federal government. Moving on now to ISIS and the growing threat over there. Um, what is your opinion of how this has all played out in the last six months or so? Well, ISIS is a, a serious business. It's a very, very real threat. Uh, you know, it's uh, the worst of Al-Qaeda as a jihadist terrorist organization combined with the worst of a big army that controls territory. It's both. And that's really dangerous, particularly when that territory includes enormous oil revenue to fund their jihad and their, th uh, their attacks against the West and the United States. And I know, um, you know, we've heard reports that, you know, possibly this is going to relate to our border crisis that we're having now. Um, you mentioned earlier you don't feel like the border is secure. W yeah. what, what you know, we'll well, those two are here. related, and that's not speculation, that's fact. We know that ISIS is encouraging their members and followers to infiltrate the United States through the Mexican border. We know that. We have those communications in black and white. We know that has been attempted on numerous occasions. We know of specific cases of Middle Easterners going into Mexico taking fake Hispanic surnames. So that is a very real threat. That's yet another reason we need to get serious with the border. What, what sort of ideas do you have for securing a border? Well, look, it's not overly complicated. We need the resources and manpower there to secure the border, all parts of the border. Some, some policies the Obama administration have are just crazy. For instance, they don't let border security agents go on property that's owned and controlled by the Interior Department, another branch of the federal government. That's nuts. That's hundreds of miles of the Mexican border. That's just crazy policy that needs to be changed. All right. And uh, any other topics you think are going to come up? Or have you well, you know, the agenda is whatever folks who show up want the agenda to, to be. It's not really my town hall. It's their town hall, what's on their mind, what they think I should be particularly focused on in my job. So I'd love folks to come out in Farmerville, at 9.30 a.m. in Homer at 4.30 p.m. All the details are on my website, www.vitter.senate.gov, vitter.senate.gov. All right, and we will actually also have all of that information on our, on our website, myarklimist.com. Senator David Vitter, thank you so much for again waking up so early with us to join us. Um, make sure if you're in these areas, you get out there, uh, you know, speak to your local lawmakers here and uh, get out there and have your opinions heard. Uh, we will be right back. More news and weather coming up after.